So I love old console-based RPGs, things like Dragon Warrior and things like that on the old Nintendo and even some on the old Sega system. The thing I liked the least about them was random encounters, just walking around the world trying to get a random monsters to attack me. Maybe think the original Final Fantasy. So normally what I would do is I'd have my younger brother do those for me, level up my characters, and then I would go on the story quest. Well, today I'm going to take a look at a game that's really based around those random encounters. And let's see if it can convince me to enjoy them. Today I'm taking a look at random encounters. It's time for another Dice Tower review with Robert Geislinger. So here we're taking a look at Random Encounters. Now this is a game for one to four players intended to emulate an RPG of sorts. Now it is a cooperative game and each player will be taking a turn being the leader of the party, trying to pull an encounter card, go through it, and when they do that, then they will pass the leader token to the next player. That person will pull an encounter until each person at the table has gotten two encounters within that level, and then you will take on the boss of that. From there, you will visit the, sh the shop, the city in, and you will then move to level two, and then eventually to level three. Along the way, you're gonna be gaining equipment and gaining levels and moving forward until hopefully you reach the end of the game. The simplest way to learn how this game is played is simply to show you what would happen. So here I have Artina the Enchanting, and she has some stats here. She has the strength, some agility, and some magic. She currently, each player starts with one level one item. She has started with a Gnarled Cane, which adds to her magic. Now she can also have a accessory item and a familiar and each of the characters are going to be a little different in terms of what they can do such as Terra the fierce here who can have a weapon and equipment and a familiar and we have beatrix the gentle here who can have equipment and two familiars we have Farica the lucky who can have two weapons and an accessory etc there will also be items in the game but those are considered communal in addition to notice some tokens up here and the stars are what's going to be important but i'll explain that as we're moving through around. If Artina here was the leader, she would pull an encounter. And some encounters are going to be monsters, some encounters are going to be events, and some possibly could even be traps, such as this one here, ensnaring vines. This is a level one forest trap, and all players must roll a nine in any skill of their choice, or suffer two damage for each failure. And in this case, it's actually all players take two damage. Now, some of these will only affect the one player. Now, and there will be a remember here where a star, if they roll a star here, it's an auto success. And you can always spend one of your star tokens to turn a roll into a star. And a one is going to be an auto failure. So she could decide which one of her stats she wishes to do. And she has a four currently in the magic. So she'd probably go for that. And she would roll. Well, she got a five, which means she would pass. So she would get through this. But anyone else at the table would also roll for it as well and potentially take damage. Once she's done with this, this will go into her success pile. And since we've got through it successfully, they're going to draw a level one loot card. Now, this loot card can be placed onto the leader or it can be given to anyone at the table. If it's an item, then it would just go into a communal. Now, in this case, it's a chainmail shirt that adds one defense. However, Artina can't wear gear, so she could pass this off to another player at the table. But since she can't wear it and we've only got the one, we'll put it here to the side and potentially sell it later. Next, we'll draw another encounter. Now, if there were multiple people at the table, we would pass the leader token, and that leader would pull the next one. But since we've only got one character, we will pull another one, and we get a man-eating worm. Now, you notice here in the corner, there's a 3x. Now, what that means is this monster has hit points equal to three times the number of players at the table. So in this case, that means that this character, this monster has three hit points. You're going to get to choose to attack it at either of these stats that you wish, and the yellow box is going to show how it's going to attack. So in this case, she's got a four, and that's a three, so she's probably going to try to attack with magic. She'll roll the die. She gets a five. She's going to add these and these, so she'll get four, five, nine. Nine minus its skill here is three. That would be enough to kill it. Now, if it wasn't, we would track its damage over here. So in this case, it would die, but let's just say that it didn't for a second. It then would counterattack. And if you're playing with multiple players, 
everyone at the table is going to get a chance to attack it, and then it's going to attack each of the players as well. But in this case, it's going to attack with a 3. It's going to roll a die the same way. It is a 3 of 5, an 8, and it will deduct out Artina's 3, thus causing her 5 points of damage. But we did defeat it, so it's going to go here. She didn't take any damage. Since she's the only one at the table, that would now trigger the boss fight. However, if there were others at the table, they would also need to have two encounters. In addition, since we defeated this one, we get to draw another loot card. This time we get a jewelry, and this is really good for her because it's going to increase her magic skill. So now we're going to bring out the boss for the level one, which is the Lord of the Jellies. This has seven times the number of players, which in her case is just seven. So we might go ahead and put a seven here. Now this has A and B because sometimes you are going to have multiple monsters. And some of these bosses can get really big and you can actually go up to 79 on the other side. But this is going to be a smaller one, so we'll do this. Now this one has a battle berth. At the start of the battle, you find the gumdrop jelly and put it in play. Now I put it on the bottom because I knew that was coming up just to make it easier for this video. So now we're gonna have to fight both of these monsters. So she can decide how she wants to attack and she has a five and a five is there, so maybe she'll roll with that. She rolls up, she gets a star. Now, when the star is rolled, there is a battle stat on the card that she can do instead. And hers is group improv. When Artina naturally rolls a, rolls a star, which she just did while attacking, she gains a star token she may give to any player. So she will gain one of these star tokens here and add it to her pool. She then gets to re-roll the die to attack. Now that is just for that, and so now she'll re-roll. She gets a four. So she's gonna do four, eight, nine, nine versus the five, giving it four points of damage, marking it down to three. Now, it's going to get to do its attack, and the jelly will get to do its attack. Now, it rolls with the agility. So it gets a 5. That's going to be 9 against her 3, bringing her down, down 6 points, bringing her to a 7. Then the gumdrop is going to attack with its strength, giving it a 3 versus her 3, so she takes no damage. Now, the... Lord of the Jellies here also has a sugar rush. When it rolls a star, it re-rolls the attack with two dice, but only attack one player at random, and in this case, it would always be her. But now it would come back to her. She would roll again. She's going to decide again to attack with magic. She gets a three, six, seven, eight, minus the five, marking it down to out. That's going to take out the boss. We still have a gumdrop to deal with. So real quick... We will roll the gumdrop. It gets a 6 minus 3, going to take us down 3 points. We will roll against it. We get a star. So she could take a star. And you know, I think I'm going to take the star only because of the fact that this thing has one hit point. So we get a 3. It's been enough to kill it. So that will end out the level 1. Now, if you go to the book, it will tell you what happens after beating the level one boss. In this case, the each player will get one level one loot card. So in this case, it's that. We'll draw this. We could decide to take it if we wish. It's a quarter staff. I think we're going to not. Then we get a skill token. You get to choose. And I think she's going to take some strength. So the skill token will add to her strength. She's going to recover her health points and increase to the max double heart. So now instead of a max of 13, she's leveled up and will now go to a max of 14. She'll take an extra star token. However, she can't take this star token because you see here she already had three and the player can only have a max of three. So while she would get it, she's not going to get to keep it. And then the players will have a chance to sell loot. In this case, one silver loot would equal one silver, and two copper, which we have two of, will equal a silver. So we could sell these two that we don't want, put them here, and take a silver. And if we decide we want it, which we actually do, because that's pretty nice for her, increasing her magic further, that's going to leave us a leftover copper that we can't sell at the moment. At this point, we are now done with the level one and we will move on to the level two encounters going the same way. Now, as you move through these, these are gonna get harder and harder. 
So you've got a skunk bear here with a seven. You've got a merchant, which is rather nice. You've even got some events like this door. You've even got some ambush that'll cause monsters to get to attack first. But so you've got plenty of things in these particular decks until eventually we will get to level three, which will have even harder monsters. Here we've got an 11 hit point minotaur. Um, let's see, we've got a monster's nest here which you draw two monster cards and fight both at the same time. You've got an ambush, as we talked about, where the monsters get to go first. You've got all sorts of different events and things. Here's a uh, monster here, a Dullahan. It is a 14 hit point, and it's only 14. It doesn't do the times, but it fights the leader one-on-one. -on -one. So monsters will also have special abilities that may cause them to do additional damage. In the same way, the bosses go up in abilities as you move through and there's even these extra hard ones on the back you could take out as well and you'll notice that all cards within the game have different types of symbols on them as to what they are and that can be affected by certain skills and things like that but anyway you'll go through until you reach the third monster the third boss if you defeat that boss then everyone at the table wins if at any point all players at the table are knocked out in a single round then everyone loses however if you're knocked out in a round and everyone else still gets through it then you do come back for the next round with one hit point in addition one thing i didn't notice was this leader here the leader whenever you're the leader you have a special ability you can do. Artina's here. When Artina's the leader, she may command a single die roll to immediately be re-rolled, even one made by monsters or bosses. So that's pretty nice. We didn't see any of these extra loots here. Let's see if I can find. Here we have a familiar, Tuesday the Fairy. Adds an additional strength to the character, and party members recover one health point when they roll a star or use a star token to make a die roll a star. And then you had things such as these gushing berries, which are communal. Uh, heal all players by three health points. Each player also gains an attack token if used during the battle. And so the attack tokens here, these will add one to each of your skills. You have defense, which will reduce incoming damage. Game is played, as I said, until you defeat the final boss, in which case you win. Otherwise, if all players go down in a single round, then the players have lost. So that's a look at random encounters. Now at the top of this review, I asked a question. Would this game make me enjoy random encounters, given that I never liked them in the past in my console-based RPGs? Well, sadly, the answer to that is no. This game is not for me. I'm not saying it's a bad game though, because I think there are people who will enjoy playing this game. But the real key word in this game is random. Most things in this game feel random. When you're going out and you're looking for those events and those monsters, that's random. It's a random pull of the, of the cards. When you're getting loot, it's random from a deck of cards. Even when you complete a level and you are going to buy loot, that's a random chance too. And then on top of that, the combat system is random to a point. Now it's random because there's a dice. Granted, you do get to pick a skill, but more often than not, you're always gonna pick the skill that you have a better ratio to. So it's not really that you're mitigating the dice, you're just always picking the most effective one. So for me, it's just too random, but there were some things I liked about the game. I liked the artwork in the game. I think it was really well done. And I like that I can tell that the folks who made this game really loved this game. They loved the characters and they put a lot of detail into the characters. There's a lot of story in there that really wasn't needed, but you can tell that these are RPG players who wanted to make a board game that gave them the feeling of an RPG, but they focused for me a little too much on the random encounter portion of it and not enough on the actual mechanisms. And me being someone who really loves mechanisms more than I love theme, it just wasn't enough to counter it. Again though, I do think there are people who will enjoy this game. It's a fast paced game. It plays quick. You can learn it in almost no time. There is a lot to love about it if you can get past the fact that it's very random. So for me, this is an absolute, I don't want to keep this game, sadly. I, I had high ups for it, honestly, but I do think that for some people, they will enjoy this game. 
Anyway, I hope that you've enjoyed this look at random encounters and it's helped you decide if the random nature is good for you and your game group or not. And I look forward to seeing you folks in the next review. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.